Hey guys, welcome back to the program. Frank next to the tank here. I hope you liked our last episode with our special guest, Anthony. He's a great friend of the show. Uh, go check out his episode of him overcoming the deception of the enemy, which I love to call atheism, and uh, how he came to Christ and how he started to trust and believe in what he's doing in the community. Go and do something for your community. Let's go serve your church, serve your community. Give someone a buck, help someone out. This is what we are called to do, people. All right, so without further ado, let's get into a proverb a day. Today we are on chapter 13. Here we go. A wise son heeds his father's instruction, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. Man. A man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the unfaithful feeds on violence. He who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. The soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. A righteous man hates lying, but a wicked man is loathsome and comes to shame. Righteousness guards him whose way is blameless. But wickedness overthrows the sinner. There is one who makes himself rich, yet has nothing. And one who makes himself poor, yet has great riches. The ransom of a man, the ransom of a man's life is his riches, but the poor does not hear rebuke. The light of the righteous rejoices, but the lamp of the wicked will be put out. By pride comes nothing but strife. But with the well-advised comes wisdom. Wealth gained by dishonesty will be diminished, but he who gathers by labor will increase. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desire comes, it is the tree of life. He who despises the word will be destroyed. Grab a pen. Underline that bad boy. He who despises the word will be destroyed. But he who fears the commandment will be rewarded. The law of the wise is the fountain of life. To turn away from the snares of death. Good understanding gains favor. But the way of the unfaithful is hard. Every prudent man acts with knowledge. But a fool lays up his folly. A wicked messenger falls into trouble. But a faithful ambassador brings health poverty and shame will come to him who disdains correction but he who regards rebuke will be honored a desire accomplished is sweet to the soul but it is an abomination to fools to depart from evil he who walks with wise men will be wise but the companion of fools will be destroyed evil pursues sinners but the righteous good shall be repaid. A man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. Much food is in the fallow ground for the poor, fallow ground of the poor, and for lack of justice there is waste. He who spares his rod hates his son, but he who loves him, parents out there, disciplines him promptly the righteous eats to the satisfying of his soul but the stomach of the wicked shall be in want guys proverbs 13 a wise son heeds his father's instruction but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke I have like a dichotomy, if that's the word. I'm not very good with big words. My one son, he'll sit down and he'll listen to you. My other son, he likes to do things on his own. He likes things his way. I'm not saying he's a scoffer. I'm not saying he's a scoffer. But there's like a...
there's a pattern I'm starting to see. A wise son heeds his father's instruction. But a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. My one son will sit down and listen. He may not like get it the first couple of times, but he'll listen. And my other son, he's just like, yeah, whatever, dude. We're working on that. He's getting a lot better. He's still young. Pride comes, by pride nothing comes but strife. But with the well-advised is wisdom. Find someone in your life who would tell you how it is. Or if you're having like major problems, don't keep them to yourself. Go to your spiritual leader. Go to uh, a mentor. Go to a pastor. They are here for that. They are here to hear what you need to say. They are shepherds on earth. They guide us through a godly channel. And I, I almost got, I got to say like the wisest counsel I've ever gotten was from pastors. Hands down. Go to your pastor. Stop holding things in. Stop thinking you can handle things yourself. Because we can go back to Proverbs 11. And I'll tell you about my friend. When pride comes, then comes shame. But with the humble, there's wisdom. But with the well-advised is wisdom. Where do you think your pastors are getting their counsel from? And if you have a pastor that doesn't hold himself accountable to anybody, you need to find a new pastor. If you have a pastor that doesn't get godly advice and thinks they can do everything on their own, you need to find a new pastor. Love it, love it, or hate it. You got to find a new pastor because everyone in the end is held accountable. We recently, oh man, last week we had to put my dog down. He bit my son and uh, he nipped at my daughter. And the trust wasn't there. He was getting old. He had a tumor on his ear. So we had to put him down. And it was hard. You know, my wife was saying, well, what if he was healthy? And, you know, we could have done something for him. It was like, in the end, as the leader of this household, I am held accountable to God not you. I was like, that's not on you. This was my decision. It was the right decision. You know, what we have friends with babies. What if he snapped at a baby? You know, it's sad, but also God gave us dominion over the earth. And this is counsel that I got from my pastors, the same thing that I was saying. It was just confirmed by them after the fact because they were checking up on me and seeing how I was doing. And that's another thing too, man. If you don't have a pastor that's checking up on you, man, like get you one. It's so awesome. It's so awesome that I could just pick up my phone right now, call my pastor and be like, yo, bro, I got this going on, man. And he can help lead me to a way. He'll be like, It's just so cool. I love my church. I love my pastors. Guys, check out Grace Family Church. Check them out on the YouTube. They just did an apologetic series, and it's awesome, by the way. Uh, Let's jump back down to he who despises the word will be destroyed. Ever since this country started taking the Bible and everything off of everything, Didn't we see gradual decline? I think it was the 60s we stopped praying in school. Decline. We had the the, the summer of love or whatever, the sexual... Whatever it was in the 60s, you hippies know. Um, We started taking the Ten Commandments off monuments. Stop reading the Bible to our children. See the decline? We stopped caring about the sanctity of life and stopped having morals 
all together. We have drag queens and stuff dancing around our children. The moral depravity that is just happening and happening and happening. And you know what? I'm not going to say I don't like, I hate these people because I don't. We're not called to hate. We're called to love. We need to love on these people, man. We need to pray for these people even though they hate us. But Jesus said, though the world hates you, know that it hated me before it even hated you. The world is going to hate you. But the Bible says right here, they'll be destroyed, man. And we got to pray. This, this is why Jesus is waiting so long to come back. He wants everyone to come to him. This is why this is the main driving factor of why I came out with Hope for Tomorrow. To win souls. Didn't we just see that verse? Was that 11? Yeah, I think it was 11. Sorry, guys, we don't have it all together here sometimes. Yes, it's 11. He who wins souls is wise. Guys, we're called to win souls. We're not called to fight people. We're not called to argue with people. We're called to win souls, man. We're called to love on people. We're called to build relationships with people. Win the soul. It's a battle. It's a battle. I have a friend that I've been trying to witness to forever. And he's so prideful. He even said, hey, man, because I sent him the series of the apologetic series that my church did. He said, oh, man, I got to keep you winning souls for 20 more years. Like, OK, dude, what if you don't have 20 years? But it's still the battle, man. It's still the battle. Guys, thank you so much. Um, we're going to wrap up chapter 13. Guys, if you're listening on the podcast, leave five stars. Uh, leave us a review. Um, if you're on the YouTube, like, subscribe, comment down below what 13 meant for you. And uh, Frank next to the tank, guys. Thanks for joining us. Keep looking up. God bless.